All right, hello there. Today we're gonna to be talking about the recent Unity changes. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a different take than the ones that I've been seeing on the internet so far. All right, so my take is basically this. If you're relying on a third party proprietary platform for your business, which is game development, then you are taking a big risk. And sometimes the risk is worth it, especially if you have a favorable license agreement of some kind. But it seems like Unity doesn't have that. And so they can just retroactively change their pricing model, change their terms of service and apply this to games that already exist. It's not just future games. It's games that have been published since, you know, years ago, since Unity came out. As a business owner, uh, you should really be considering anything you rely on is a risk. If you rely on AWS, it's still a risk. I mean, is it a big risk? Maybe not. But, you know, some people have businesses that they started on, let's say, Amazon or Etsy, right? And then for whatever reason, the algorithm changes or they get banned from the platform and suddenly a business is just gone because you relied solely on this third party and they have control over whether you can actually make money. Now, in this case, they probably can't take away the games that have been made, right? But they can, as they're trying to do, add new taxes on to existing games years later. The point is they have the control. You gave the control away, which is fine. Sometimes you need to give away control for convenience. Maybe there was no way you could make a game at the time that you did without using Unity. Maybe the other tools weren't available. Maybe you just had, you know, you have skills in Unity. The people you're with have skills in Unity. So it made sense to use it. Of course, I understand. This is an example of what I've been talking about for a while, which is your business relying on someone else and they have the power. In the entrepreneurial circles, uh, they already know this stuff. They, they know about this, but for some reason, game development is not considered entrepreneurial, even though it is really, especially indie game development. You should be looking at it from an entrepreneurial perspective. So any third party reliance is extra risk. You need to factor that in. All right, so if I'm saying that you shouldn't rely on third parties, what are the options? What can you do? Let's have a look. Okay, here we are over in Brave. And this is the blog post. I've just turned on the dark mode. So I've highlighted a couple of things that I was going to talk about, but it doesn't really matter. It's just the details. Um, however, I do want to say this part here, we believe that an initial install base fee allows creators to keep the ongoing financial gains from player engagement unlike a revenue share. This is just BS, uh, and so is this, right? This means that in addition to other benefits, the costs of Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise licenses can be offset by the savings as the game grows. They're really trying to spin it as a good thing for developers, but it's just bad for everyone. It doesn't matter what level you're at, you know, if you have a look at the details, it's bad for everyone. So don't listen to their lies, okay? It's just BS. All right, so what can you do? If you're a programmer and you want to be a good game programmer, well, you can check out my course. Obviously, I've got to plug myself here. About 20 episodes uh, in this course, you'll learn how to write a simple game engine for a 2D platformer. And I think that's, that's a pretty good start. But if that's not really your jam, or maybe if you want to go a little bit deeper, because this says from scratch, but actually it's not quite from scratch. You still use a couple of libraries. Casey Moratori's Computer Enhance is a really good course and you learn like assembly language and that's that's really good. It's much more condensed than his Handmade Hero series, which is on YouTube. This one, however, is paid, I should say. This is also my Substack that I've been writing recently called The Bytes Beneath. And so far, we're just going through what I consider to be programming lies. Uh, I'll plug that more at the end later, perhaps. So let's say you're more of an engine guy. Well, everyone in their grandmas probably recommended you Godot. And I agree. Godot is pretty good, I think. It's a pretty good engine. It has its limitations like all engines, uh, but that's fine. That's one of the trade-offs. But one of the good things is, as far as I know, they can't screw you later because they don't have like a runtime. I'm pretty sure they don't have a runtime thing. Also, it's 
open and free. Look at this, no hidden, no contracts or hidden fees. That sounds pretty good. It's under the MIT license, open source. That's awesome. So yeah, use Godot. Probably a lot of people are going to be using Godot. But if you're more like me and you want to do programming, but maybe you don't want to do it from scratch, or let's say your business has decided we don't have the time to invest in a custom engine. We're only going to you know, make games that are within the scope of something like Godot or something you know, similar, but you still want a little bit more control. What can you do? Well, you can go to one of these lists like this awesome graphics library list by JS Lee 2 So these are all graphics libraries. Uh, BGFX looks pretty good. Magnum looks pretty good. I'm sure a lot of these are, are great, right? And you can grab yourself a graphics library, all right? And then you go over to one of these lists. This is a list of physics engines. You grab yourself one of these. Let's say you're making a 2D game, just get box 2D. And now you've got yourself a phys physics engine. Now, this isn't really necessary, but you could come and grab something like ENTT, which Minecraft Bedrock Edition actually uses. And now you've got yourself an entity system. So now you've got entities, you've got physics, you've got graphics. Those are going to be the three most challenging things. Uh, of course, if you do this, you're not going to have an editor. But if you have a renderer, you can just build an editor pretty easily. You know, maybe grab uh, I am GUI or whatever your preferred UI library is, put together a little editor for your game. And now you've got yourself a little custom game engine and you can control everything. The best part is if you decide, oh, actually, you know, we want to write our own graphics pipeline. Well, you can just replace BGFX or whatever you decided to use with your own. And you can keep the other things in there and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to like fight the engine and like do weird workarounds and patches and stuff. So it's really good. You can kind of choose your own difficulty level with this stuff. You don't have to go hardcore from scratch. So that's what I really think you should be doing. Think of it like an entrepreneur would think of it. Okay. Every added dependency is a risk. I think it's a much healthier way to think about things because you can never tell what people will do in the future. Let's say, for example, it doesn't matter. You don't need an example. It just happened, right? This has happened before. If we go over here to the Hidden Grove, which is Ryan Flurry's Substack, I think he has an article about ships, icebergs, game engines. All right. So I don't really need to plug this guy. He's already pretty popular, but I'll plug him anyway. He seems to have some pretty cool stuff to say. Now, this is another instance where an engine called the Machinery, they just revoked all their licenses. Okay. And then he kind of explains what happened. Um, but there was projects that were not released yet. They were in progress. Some of them, I think, were a couple of years in progress. And they just had to close their company because they couldn't change to a new engine. It was going to cost too much money. This is another instance of this thing happening. All right. So you really don't want to be in this position. If you can help it, use something free and open source like Godot. Use something you know, that you've like stitched together yourself with awesome libraries that are hopefully free and open source as well. Make your own custom game engine. You know, there's a lot of options. Um, just protect yourself. All right. Especially indie devs, because you're not going to be able to afford, like, let's say you reach a modicum of success where you're just over that threshold. That is going to really screw you. Um, 200,000 installs and you're making, let's say you're making just over 200 K USD a year, or you just, you did in the past year and you've got the exact 200,000 thresholds, right? Uh, what's that going to be like, uh, uh, 40,000, is it $40,000? Surely it's not $40,000, is it? Let's do some quick maths. Oh, it is. It is $40,000. Okay, so you've made 200 grand and then you got to pay the tax man, except it's not the tax man, it's Unity. Yeah, that's really not great. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So look, this change is just BS, all right? Great. So use Godot or even better, come check out my game engine series.